Hey, mister. How are you, Ray? Can't hear you. I can't see you. There we go. Yeah, I was saying that uh th that shirt is one of my favorite shirts. How about now? There you go. Yep, I could hear you. There we go. Yeah, I was saying that that's one of my favorite shirts. Um Nice. The yeah. red, red gates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm in, I'm in my oh, You're breaking up. Like... Let's see it. Hey, Ray. Good morning. Happy. Can you hear me better if I go to 5G? That sounds better. Yes. Okay, good. I think I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in Maloya, Switzerland this week. Oh, nice. nice. I feel like I'm in a hotel where they might have filmed The Shining or something, like a trippy, like it's called the Maloya Palace, and it's a this really old wooden hotel. How are you, Emily? I'm good. I'm hunting for the email that Amy sent out yesterday. That has all the details for today. I thought that was a couple days ago. Maybe it was. You know, all the days they they just start running together after time. There was one from yesterday. I that thought, too. Yep. Still, it was, it's probably on the mailing list. That'd be entirely too sensible. I know. Look for look for the places where things are expected to be. Yes. You'll never find them there. Don't try. Yeah. Uh -huh. I have discovered it. Uh -huh. yeah, Ricardo. Daniel's with us. Yeah. Hello. Hello, folks. Don't have that many people yet. I'm trying to fill up. There it goes. Video got stuck this morning. Ooh. Probably something new. Hooray. We'll give a few more minutes because mm -hmm. um, we've got some folks joining us. So, hooray. We were just appreciating the fact that you that you're very good about sending your mails in a place where we can find them. So that was very nice. 
Uh, yeah, no, and, and I actually did something yesterday that I should have done many, many years ago, and now all of the rewards uh, just go towards, like, here. Like, this particular address is now just for, forever and ever now going to, like, go to the right place. Instead of, like, you know, Google wow. Forms is not, in fact, your friend when you're copying and pasting things over. Who knew? True. It was a Monday, but I fixed yeah. it. Great. Uh, yeah, and I've actually Good put the slides here as well, so folks know like where to be able to go for that. So, well, that that's kind of how we'll wrap up today. Exactly. Good fun for everybody. I expect lots of wonderful nominations, please. As do I. Do we have enough folks to get started? Seeing some TOC members. I'm just quickly running through. Uh, we don't have quite enough TOC members, but we also yeah. don't need quorum today. So, okay. Well, let's go let's ahead and, rock get and roll. Started. All right. Welcome, everyone. It's September 19th. It's the TOC public meeting today. Um, thanks for joining us. Today, we're going to talk about sandbox projects. Um, sandbox annual reviews specifically and how some of the changes to the process um, that were proposed previously or uh, in summer um, have went. Uh, yesterday the tags should have completed as many of the annual reviews as they could have based off of the conducting annual, sandbox annual reviews document that was worked on by a small cohort of individuals in the ecosystem. Um, the intent was to ensure that these didn't take more than maybe an hour to two hours per project by a contributor from a tag doing these reviews. We do know that we had a lot that were submitted. I think we ended up with over 30 at one point um, that were, as you can see on the slide, not equally distributed amongst all the tags, which is often reflective of our ecosystem. So today we wanted to understand a little bit more about how everybody felt the process went, whether or not this is going to be sustainable moving forward. There were a lot of great ideas from that cohort that put together the process. However, as with most things in engineering, uh, we don't really know what works until we try it out. So I'm interested to hear from the tag chairs and technical leads and other participants in this process, how they felt this went. Um, what feedback they had, any challenges, were they able to complete them all? I suspect the answer to that one is a no. And I will turn it over to you all. Uh, I can probably go for tag runtime. Okay, uh, thanks. Hi, well, I'm Rajas. Um, so... For, from a tag runtime perspective, we had over 14 reviews uh, to go over. Um, and we did have uh, a couple of challenges, mostly from uh, contributor bandwidth and lack of volunteers from tag runtime to go through like 14 reviews. Uh, as of today, out of the 14 reviews, we have um, around two which we could complete. Um, end to end and when i say complete end to end like uh, a review comment posted on the pr uh we have we still have four pending projects wherein we've still not started the reviews as of now mostly because uh, we didn't have contributors uh and for some of them we reached out to tag environmental sustainability and they were kind enough to uh like some of the contributors from there were like kind enough to help us out as well but then these are still in progress and uh, yet to be reviewed. Um, we, uh, again, uh, going, following up on that number, we have another like five of the projects wherein we are still waiting for follow-ups from contributors who have reviewed it. And then, you know, going through a review from like say tag chairs or leads and then, uh, again, going for a review from TOC Leosa and then uh, getting back to the PR. And then we have three other uh, projects wherein the contributors reviewed the project, but then we're still waiting for a final act or a remediation or a review from the TOC Leosa. So that's, that's kind of where we are from a tag runtime perspective. 
all of what I've said is uh, collated in this sheet. Yeah, thanks for uh, putting that out, Ricardo. Uh, the other thing that I also wanted to call out was we, we faced a couple of challenges in terms of how it was difficult in terms of reviewing projects which had reviews written for 2022, but then we were reviewing them now so that the data was kind of not consistent. Uh, for example, for Kamada, they have uh, applied for incubation and then some of the data that was put, it, put out in the 2022 annual review was not consistent with the incubation uh, proposal as of now, which which makes sense. But then it it made difficult to go back and forth on the current state and the state from 2022 and things like that. So uh, this is where we are. I think uh, we could have done better in terms of like uh, reaching out to other tags uh, and distributing this load from tag runtime. That's that's what I feel. Uh, but then, yeah, these are some of my thoughts based on uh, the experience that we have had. That's fantastic. So I, I want to dive into some uh, a little bit more of the meat of that. So in addition to the contributor bandwidth and availability of con contributors that, that drove a lot of the kind of completion challenges and coordination issues. Do you think that the tag, either the chairs, the contributors got a better understanding of the projects themselves and kind of where they were at? Was it a good exposure and learning opportunity between tag members and projects? Uh, absolutely. Uh, one thing that I really missed was how uh, meticulously the the process document was laid out in order to conduct the review. That was really good. That helped a lot. Uh, so thanks for doing that. Uh, and uh, going through the reviews and getting this, this definitely helped getting more contributors to tag on time in terms of like getting them acquainted with all the projects and then going through that, that, that really helped. So yes, that was uh, very much fulfilling and helpful. Okay. What about others? I'm curious to hear how the other tags experience was. Well, I can talk briefly about tag app delivery. Um, we only had four and I, I know three of them, we don't have, there's progress, but they haven't been completed. I really like the tag runtime. I just wanted to say that really fast. Just Ricardo, thanks for sharing that. Just looking at the documents and the review documents, just quickly that it's awesome being able to see that. Um, and it'd be nice to have a template going forward with each of those. That's Anyway, um, so for me, I was looking at um, CDKs and I there were a couple process things as I was going through it. Um, for example, um, like what you were just saying about Karmata, um, there's some things that stood out that do need remediation or for the TOC to look at. So I I put that in the issue in the tag app delivery, but I wasn't sure if I needed to put that on the issue in the TOC. So just little process things that can be ironed out and then going forward, they'll go a lot faster. Um, but I can see that the next time we meet to discuss, you know, kind of process and what worked and what didn't, um, we'll have a lot of feedback just to streamline and then make a checklist. Mm -hmm. Did you all feel for the ones that you started in progress that you were getting a good connection back with the project, getting the project more engaged probably with tag app delivery? or um, a better understanding of how the project works, better exposure within the tag. Yes, and that's where I also wasn't sure, and we weren't sure whether we should, how engaged we should be with the project, um, whether walking them through what the thought process is. I mean, if it's supposed to only be an hour or two, um, I mean, the engineers and the maintainers were really responsive. So that was really good to see. But how much 
engagement before the review is complete and then inviting them to come participate in various ways. I guess those would be kind of some outstanding questions. Okay. Um, other tags or even maintainers on the call that participate in this, I'd be curious to hear from them as well. Um, I, I can give you like a very quick summary on from the storage side. It, it's, it's not being a large number as, as you can see, but I think it has probably been positive in that it's helped engage with the projects that we had to a certain extent lost touch with. So it sort of forced the contact point, um, which was good. Um, it's um, I think we're going to probably need to think about how we're going to scale this if the numbers grow. Um, I'm kind of wondering if we need to, you know, we're, we're, we're going to need to, as much as possible process and template this and whatever else to kind of make it low touch. Um, but it also got me thinking as to <clears throat> um, some of the things that we can take out of this. So, you know, I I feel like it would be, as we go through the first batch, it would be a good idea to collect some stats in terms of um, maybe some of the common outcomes, like what what do we want to do? Um, what was what was the recommendation, for example? You know, where, where the where the projects actually being on a good track or not on a good track? You know, and kind of get um, kind of use that <clears throat> as as maybe um, input into the into the. Um, selection process for sandboxes up front, for example, you know, to kind of say, look, if 80 or 90% of sandbox projects maybe are not going to plan, or maybe they are, right? I'm, I'm, I have no idea what the numbers actually are, but but we can kind of make those calls then to sort of say, look, do we, do we need to tighten up the criteria earlier on in the process, or do we need to loosen them, or do we need to think of them as something different you know i i i i think we we should use this as a as a guidance point because the sandbox um process is a kind of a bit of an experiment in itself right and um we've we've grown the portfolio hugely in the last year um way beyond probably our initial expectations um, and we, we we should kind of use that as a level set, I think, or use this as an opportunity to level set. Um, also, using you know by level setting, we can probably um, set out some guidance to projects to kind of say, look, these are the things that eighty percent of the projects get called up on at their annual reviews. So these are the things you should be working towards in your first year as a sandbox project you know, to kind of improve the pass rate, if you wish. This is great feedback. So I'm going to summarize kind of a little bit about what I'm hearing. Um, we still have bandwidth and availability issues within the tags, and it doesn't sound like with the volume of sandbox and even incubating and graduated projects, because we've had discussions within the community around annual reviews for those to make sure that we do have touch points, make sure they're healthy and that they're achieving the things that they want, um, that it's not sustainable at scale for what we have. Um, however, the engagement and the enrichment between the tag members and the projects is potentially a positive here. That's what it sounds like. Being able to engage with them, understand more about the projects where they're at, and being able to proactively help them. So identifying issues earlier on, this is like the whole concept of shift left in security, except we're talking about shifting left for project maturity. Um, that makes a lot of sense to me. 
but we need to do this in an automated fashion. I think leveraging some of the the information and the learnings that we have here around where projects are getting stuck is beneficial. How does that align with the guideposts? I can see this being as a valuable input to furthering some of the discussions on, on the moving levels process and some of the criteria changes, some of the template changes that can go on there. Um, what else are, are from going through this exercise, like, does it sound like having a function to check in with projects, maybe not necessarily as an annual review mechanism, but something that's more um, automated, low friction, puts more of the interactivity on the projects that are already doing good things to kind of self-manage and self-sustain the way that we allow self-governance to occur in those projects that don't have the same amount of activity or may not be as responsive, having that be the force of function to come back into the tags, to have these discussions, to get them back on the right path. Um, so sorry to speak up again, but like a, a few of the things could be automated. You know, so for example, where we are giving guidance to say, you know, um, make your community meetings public and have a Slack channel group somewhere and things like that. Those are the sort of things that um, they can be templated and the project can actually register those things in a simple place in GitHub somewhere. Um, and then they can be checked automatically. And it kind of is sort of like almost self-checking. So like, for example, if they do have a Slack group, you know, they can register that somewhere. Um, a bot can check the number of members and, the, you know, the number of messages, for example, and can gauge, um, can gauge engagement that way. And also like, you know, make sure that public meetings are registered somewhere in a Google Doc or whatever. And, you know, track updates, but it, it, it would be possible. It would be nice to kind of template these things so that the, the, um, which, and by the way, the, a lot of these things, which we're measuring, um, are probably also the same sort of things that the projects need to build a community in the first place as well. So, you know, this is probably kind of like a little nudge that if they want to build the number of members that they're, they're probably need to do some of this stuff anyway. Yep, that will make sense. Do you see members or liaisons that participated in this or had the opportunity to um, from annual review completion? Do you have any feedback? I think just kind of iterating on, let's automate this because this is not sustainable at all. Uh, and it also took a lot of time, I think more than what I expected. Uh, because I think it depends. So like it depended on the community member who was reviewing the PR. If someone is completely new to the community and they just wanted to help out, that was nice. Like love to see their interest. Uh, I think feedback from such community members, it required a lot of back and forth, uh, which is fine, but it also takes time. So I think it also depends on the kind of volunteers we get and so on. Um, so yes, let's just please automate this. Great. And if I could just add something, Emily. Um, yeah, so from the CNCF staff side, uh, we actually did have a great meeting on Friday to discuss um, potentially how the, the larger LFX platform can help with automation and data gathering. So uh, we've given them details on, on current pain points, the list of um, things that are in the GitHub issue from Krishna. And um, they're looking at potentially ways to, um, to to proactively get some of this information, um, kind of call out uh, things and make it available. So we're recording this meeting, we're sharing it with the LFX team. So uh, hopefully we'll we'll have something here to, to make this easier for TLC, the tags and the projects themselves. That's fantastic to hear. Um, all right, so we've gone through this activity, we've gotten some feedback, I think, definitely the automation need is is there. Um, we do still have projects submitting annual reviews. Um, the Clo Monitor bot is going actually out and, and pinging them. Um, Leo had a question around how much less work is this for the TOC now? And it sounds like there's still a lot of work for the liaisons and the tag chairs. So I definitely agree that there's still a lot of work that needs to happen here. There's still a lot of coordination. So 
we may not have reduced the the amount of effort for all all individuals involved. We might have just distributed it a little bit more. And given that we're already strapped for contributor resources and time, um, there might be something that we need to do here. And Ricardo, I'll I'll let you speak. I was gonna say something about automation, uh, but yeah, there there are uh, several things you know that could be automated. Uh, but obviously it takes a lot of work. But, I mean, there's the aspect of uh, pinging the reviewers, uh, maybe the suggestion of having something on Slack or a Slack channel. We uh, Tag Runtime has a Slack channel that we created for the reviews. We could have a bot that actually pings uh, the assignees um, or a reminder, you know, to to complete the review or or to show some progress uh, so so there's that aspect um additionally there could be some github um, way to assign the review to a person and have a bot or to remind as well uh, the other aspect is the request for information from the projects right? so i'm not really sure what the what can be done there, but I mean, some some of the folks might have more suggestions. But it would be nice to have a, an automated way to request information from the projects and when someone is reviewing the the project. But yeah, so those are some of the aspects that I can think of of automation. But I I think we can distill all the different ones um, in a follow up. Um, I was just thinking maybe like a like a sort of post mortem type of. Uh, exercise after um, all of these reviews are done. Okay. Um, so what about the content in the instructions? So we got some feedback that the instructions that were provided were pretty clear for the most part. There were still some confusion areas, but the overall content are reviewing the project scope and the goals, community development, project governance, long-term planning those areas, collaboration, how is the project integrating with other projects in the ecosystem? Do we feel that that content from the conducting sandbox annual reviews document was worthwhile in engaging with some of these projects and ascertaining where they're at or where they may be getting stuck? Was there something that was missing? Go ahead. Uh, it, it, it did feel like that the content in the doc was pretty much helpful in conducting the review. Uh, my, my question is whether the, the template for uh, the annual review would reflect the, the instruction set in, that, in the document. If, if, if that's what, something that we would be doing, like, that would be great so that we can, it'll be easier for us to automate as well. Yep, completely agree. We didn't have the time to be able to get to that with the annual reviews already being submitted, but definitely. Karina. You're muted still. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was just looking for which section it is. I thought the instructions were good. Um, where I was having a hang up is when it wasn't a quick checkbox that yes, they're doing great, everything's wonderful. Tag, you know, recommends things that um, you know, the review is complete. Um, so I think it's section it's five. I'm looking. Um, maybe I'll find it later. But if you have problems with, or if it looks like the project is having issues that need to be remediated, um, the process there, is it more go ahead and submit some issues to the project, hey, look at these things, or is it purely, hey, TOC liaisons, this is what we saw, um, can you help do something about it? So how? what are the boundaries, how much interaction with the project when it comes to that? Um, those are my questions. 
Yeah, I think um, based off of how we had it written, and I believe section five is the right one from the document, is that the the TOC liaisons would be primarily responsible for engaging with the project on some of those issues, but I don't think we actually fully explored what they are. Um, I can see some issues being just guidance from the tag to the project if they're domain specific, um, but I can also see some of the other ones that are more around governance, that it's not necessarily tag runtime's responsibility to take on, but maybe directing them back to tag contributor strategy and that their TOC liaison may be a mechanism to do that or the tag chairs. Um, so it sounds like we need some resolution for when problems are uncovered associated with projects or even just challenges. They don't all have to be problems, um, indicators of problems to come. But definitely agree with like simplifying the easier path if a project looks like they're they're on the right track the 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 feedback's been positive we've we've not seen anything that's untoward or or um questionable in in their practices they seem to be doing fairly well that should be a much simpler path but as we start uncovering some of this stuff um whether that's lack of engagement not clear indicators missing documentation or governance lack of activity associated with the project that should warrant a more in-depth engagement probably with them either by the tag by a toc member um, or even just a general community member looking to help out so how do others feel about that moving moving it more into like um a whole mechanism alex you came off mute i i was just wondering um what's sort of the grace periods so so for example um can sandbox projects still be embryonic after a year and is that bad but it may be after two years or three years is it really bad and needs remediation like I, I you know what I mean like where, where is there a line yeah that's actually not something that we have it. and TOC members I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this but we don't actually define time frames for how long you can or can't stay in a particular uh, maturity level of the foundation each project matures at a different rate than others and their concept of maturity is going to vary um, you're not going to have every project look like Kubernetes. You're not going to have every project look like Spiffy. You're not going to have every project look like uh, Falco or any of the other projects within the ecosystem. They're all kind of unique. There are some characteristics that are similar. We can probably pattern them out. But what works for one project that comes in, I mean, we've had projects apply to Sandbox and then say, you should really be looking at incubation in three months. You're not quite there yet, but you're going to be real soon. And then we have other ones that are just so new and they don't have a lot of community there. They're still exploring their use cases, but they have a good concept for experimentation. Those ones might be there for a couple of years and that's okay too. Right, but, but I guess what I'm trying to say in an indirect way is do we do we want to have like um a line where we say you know community growth not going in the right direction and you know indicators not in the right direction for two annual reviews mean you're automatically going into archive or something like that you know to 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 kind of um have a have an automatic filter is a good question, and I don't know that we have an answer. I think, I think a clear line there is uh, maybe after two years, you see no activity on a project, right? So that you see like um, no commits, no no activity on GitHub, right? So, so that that's a clear line of archival. Um, I, I mean, I'm just saying two years, but it, I mean it could be. A year and a half or a year, depending on consensus, right? But, uh, but in terms of like uh, project being in sandbox, I think we already talked about it. The the projects can remain in sandbox indefinitely, and they can remain there to experiment as long as they have some sort of activity. Um, they're they're looking for new things, trying new ideas. Uh, but yeah, so that that's hard to tell. Like you know, you know what the line is there but you know i think if there's some sort of activity the project should still be in sandbox yep uh, automation of 
inactivity detection, I think is definitely an area. And I believe we there's work being done on that, Daniel um, or Amy. I think this was one of the topics that the TOC recently talked about is we do have metrics and indicators. It's a matter of how do we automate discovery of inactive projects so that we can engage with them and understand whether or not they truly are inactive or is something else going on. I, I don't know where I saw this. It might be something like a link Chris Anacek shared, but there is a dev stats, <clears throat> there is a dev stats dashboard ordered by inactivity. And it's yep. kind of fairly obvious, honestly. If we apply that to sandbox, it would be easy to look at. Yep. I agree. I, I think I've seen the exact same one. I just can't place it right now. Yeah. Um so Automation of discovery of inactive projects definitely needs to happen. That's something that we can work on with the foundation to ensure that that is one less thing on our plates. Um, so we're not spending cycles going and hunting for those projects. If we've already got the data collected, we should be able to automate that discovery and engagement. Um, as far as annual reviews go, I want to reduce the amount of work that we're we've created as a result of the annual review process without compromising the level of engagement and exposure that both the tags and the projects get to one another because i think that is incredibly valuable as well as the opportunity for getting new contributors into these tags it's a matter of how do we keep that level of engagement how do we ensure that there is as much um, technical support within the process through automation mechanisms to reduce that level of effort. Because if a, if a project is doing all the right things, having them take time out of their workflow to go and write an annual review isn't necessarily a great use of their time, particularly if they're already pursuing incubation. How do others feel about that? Makes sense. Okay. See some head nods. All right. So I'm going to throw out a wild and crazy idea. <laughs> How about we disable the Clow Monitor bot from requesting annual reviews for projects for right now? It's generating a, an excessive amount of work. We currently don't have the contributors to go through everything. I think I'd like us to finish up the annual reviews that we currently have maybe except for projects that are already applying to move levels because we're TOC is going to look at them regardless. We're going to know what's happening and they've already implied. So they're probably in a decent state, maybe a few things off. And then from there, we can figure out how does that annual review process work moving forward? I like the idea of the automation as much as possible. I like the idea that we're engaging with projects that actually need our time and attention and allowing us to facilitate that. Seeing a lot of plus ones. Well, I think we need to revisit what value we think annual reviews actually provide. Given yep. we've done them long enough, I feel like we can be objective about that. And if there's something that we can establish health and through automation, awesome. But otherwise, I think it's it's not providing direct value today necessarily because we're not really doing anything with that information. We're not archiving, we're not moving levels, we're not engaging, it's just a report. So um, I fully support pausing that and figuring out a new path forward and would love to hear from all the tag leadership as to possible different options we should consider. Hmm. Raina and then Alex. Thank you. Um, I will say that I did highlight areas. We haven't completely finished it because there are areas of concern, but areas of integration and where they can have touch points with the tag and other projects that they could integrate with. So next steps that I would see after this one, I mean, they have a lot of Helm work, you know, talk with the Helm community and maybe that's within tag app delivery. And I know, you know, could use more maintainers or even contributions between both of them. Um, and then a couple other areas. So I saw it as a good thing going through the review. If a lot of it's automated, um, I mean, even if it doesn't happen, but at least some touch points, but I do see where we 
can have some value with that project talking to other projects within the ecosystem. Um, I just wanted to highlight that. Completely agree. I'm wondering if there are elements of that that could also be automated as part of that. Alex? Um, maybe this is a bit dramatic, but it kind of depends on what the TOC envisage the sandbox for. So if we if we want to put a time frame on things and the idea for the sandbox is that eventually they do go to incubation because that's what the foundation is about. Um, do we want to, it to be self-selecting by the maintainers? I.e. a review is done at the point where the maintainers say that they're on an incubation track. Um, and if they don't say they're on an incubation track within some given period of time, two years, three years, whatever that number is, then it automatically goes into an archival process. And if it and if they do say that goes into an incubation track, then it goes for an incubation review. And then that kind of resets either resets the clock because something's missing or it actually goes to incubation. I think there's a lot of good ideas in that. Um, it sounds like, I mean, just talking about the concept of an incubation review, one of the areas that the TOC has encountered with projects that do apply once they once they file the PR on our repo is doing that initial cursory check with the project of, are they actually ready? Having the tags step in to be able to do that would be beneficial. And, and just to Ricardo's point, the annual review doesn't need to actually still be an annual review. It can just be a review. Um, and that moving levels function is a great checkpoint to re-engage with the project to make sure that they're on the right track. And there's still the opportunity for them to request assistance from tags, even if they're not there. How do I get on the incubation track? Mm. What other thoughts? I, I mean, like, this is excellent feedback. That, and I think that we have enough information that we can start to take action um, and make this a little bit more meaningful. There's uh, there's still the project uh, moving levels task force, um, I think, that has very similar concepts to some of what's being discussed here, so like minds, um, which is great. And I want to be able to capitalize on that back within the task force with the recommendations that are come out of it. Okay. Um, so, Leo. Yeah, one one thought about the handover process. So we have in tech environment, environment sustainability, we don't have any reviews assigned to us, but we helped uh, tech runtime with two reviews. And I think we can also make this process a little bit more slimmer. Um, I'm not sure if it is the best idea to hand over the entire review. Um, I think maybe it's easier to just like uh, bring up this topic in the tag and say you can uh, like contribute to tag runtime so they own still the review and the tag chairs do not lose uh, the entire review um, because I think it's kind of like just observing kind of the two uh, reviews that um, we help with. It's putting us a little bit in like a middleman position. It's a little bit strange because um, like tech runtime was uh, kind of uh, requesting help. I was requesting help. So it was kind of just, I think, unnecessary that um, uh, the supporting tech is also ho hoovering over this entire process. So I think we can um, reduce the process load and everything a little bit on this side too. Yep, I agree. That's a good call out. It also promotes um, cross tag collaboration and partnerships as well. So getting getting a little bit more exposure to things beyond the particular domain that a contributor might usually operate within. So that's, that's a great suggestion. Anything else? Okay, so I heard definitely turn off the Clo Monitor bot. Okay. Like, that's like item number one. What else do we do with all of the ones kind of like out there? Because I want to make sure that we're clear on that part. I think for 
projects that are currently in the middle of an annual review by a tag member, um, if if you're getting responses from those projects, let's close those out and wrap them up because I still think the projects are getting value from that. But anything that hasn't been started, I don't think that we should take on right now. Um, the annual reviews that are currently outstanding and submitted on the TOC repo, um, TOC members will need to decide what we want to do with those ones. Um, if we just quickly do a cursory review of them and then accept them based off of the discussions from this call. Um, and then the expectation is that no projects moving forward would be submitting annual reviews until we figure out how we want to do a review process, which it sounds like we've got some great suggestions here as input to the moving levels task force, as well as um, engagements back with the tags for those projects and integrations amongst projects themselves. I don't want to forget about that one. Did I summarize that well for everyone? Did I miss anything? Alex? Yeah, yeah no, I was just going to say yes. and reducing load for TOC liaisons, yes. Okay. Amy, did you get everything that you needed? Daniel, did you get yes, everything that I you needed? Yes, I think so. And Daniel, passing to you. Yeah, I think so. Those are the key ones. So the ones that haven't started, how many of those, um, how many of those are open, do we know? That's a good uh, question. Use more words. I'm not sure if I caught the question. Oh, sorry. Uh, so there's, uh, closing out and wrapping up the in-flight annual reviews, and then there's ones that haven't started it already. How many are those? And are they? Do you just want to close those out? What do you want? Uh, Off the there. top of my head, there's about like six or so that have come in through like July and August that like haven't been like like touched at all. Um, I think we should probably add those back in and at least do like a a cursory review on the TOC side. Okay, Emily. Like <laughs> Emily does not disagree with me. Anyone else, feel free to be able to disagree. I do want to be able to make sure that we're we're actually recognizing the project's work, but I also don't want to be able to give them more. Okay. All right. Awesome. I really appreciate the tags leadership and the tag con contributors focus on doing this because this is something that I feel like personally has been long overdue. Is is reevaluating these annual reviews. We we had indicators of the value that they provide, but maybe that was not necessarily aligned with the outcome and how we were actually using them. So this is excellent information for us to take into consideration moving forward, particularly as we have access to so much information about what our projects are doing and how they're doing it. And if we have the opportunity to automate that as much as possible, we should be doing so. Um, so this has been fabulous and I really appreciate everyone's time. One question um, the, for the current annual reviews, the tax should just continue to finish those up, right? So that's the, the goal, right? For, for if that. you've already got a contributor that is assigned to do an annual review or an annual review that they have already started, let's finish those up. If there is an annual review that has not yet been started, the TOC will take those on. Okay. And I would imagine the same would apply to the reviews waiting for a TOC liaison to to approve, right? Yep. The TOC liaison will go in and, and do those approvals. Sounds good. Do we have a timeline when we're targeting to complete everything? Amy, how's our schedule look for the TOC? Kind of blocked, if I'm honest. Um, end of the year? There. Okay. <laughs> That works for me. Let, we can get everything. It's, on... it's an annual review. Let's close them up at the end of the year. There. Yep. Ricardo? No, I just say like people will get more excited after KubeCon. So. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll have something more to announce about it at KubeCon. So we can, the sooner we get these closed out, the more we can focus on making these changes effective. Awesome. All right. We've got 14 minutes left. Any other questions? Okay. Community award nominations are open. If you are subscribed to the TOC mailing list, great. You've already got this message. We have a new award though that I want to call out, particularly of interest to this group of folks, is the Taggy. This award is designed to identify a tag contributor 
who has gone above and beyond and has broad reach and significant impact in growing the tag ecosystem. So think about who in your in your circle within your tag or even in other tags has been super beneficial and you've seen that impact. Um, nomination links are in the slide deck as well as on the mailing list. And if you're not on the mailing list, I do recommend subscribing. Is Taggy a single person or is it like chop wood carry order? This year we're doing one because I'm trying not to be able to overload things. Okay. If we get phenomenal amount of like, you know, uh, nominations and all of that, I, we can consider expanding it. But for this year, we're going to do one. Sounds good. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.